similar to integer initializer list. Uh, alternatively, we could uh, initially create our array of strings uh, using initializer list. So again, I'll just replace this new string of five strings with initializer list syntax. I know this is going to be a longer initializer list, so I'll just use uh, multiple lines for this. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, basically uh, use uh, these strings. Right? It's just sometimes copy and paste is a bit ugly, but I'll fix it very quickly like this. Okay, and because this is a list, we have to use a comma. And I'll just change change this to a list of strings. And that's why we call it initializer list. Okay, so this looks like this. At the end, we don't need the comma. And the uh, result of copy and paste sometimes looks a little a little off so it's possible to just say source format and this will format is everything like this so uh, here uh, the same result as these uh, six lines of code would do uh, so similarly we can do it with just one statement that creates an array of strings and uses initializer list to create strings and to populate this array of strings with uh, individual uh, references to these strings and the size of an array is derived from the length of this initializer list so of course it will also be five elements long and of course later on I can use this uh, array any way I like and this will simply repopulate uh, the array um, uh, elements with uh, new uh, new strings. Um, in fact, it's up to Java compiler to decide whether this string already is in memory. Very likely, it's just going to reuse it the second time compared to the first time right here. But it's just a technicality. Uh, right now, we're trying to just focus on the sizes of arrays and ways to access individual elements. And of course, it's very important to know that uh, it's very easy to have methods that accept arrays as parameters. And we can, as long as the type of an array matches the original type of an array that we create, it's very easy to just pass this array by reference uh, to another part of the program, uh, another method, and uh, manipulate this array uh, internally the way we like. So this is an example of this method that manipulates an array of strings. Another example is that we can have class name product and product may contain uh, data attributes and methods. So we can have arrays of objects and uh, string is also an object defined in Java library. So string is already an example of an array of objects like we tried here. But if we design our own class, uh, we can have arrays of object references to objects of a specific class, just like this. So the code here uses a constant to specify an array length. Um, well, sometimes um, instead of using hard-coded array sizes like this, it just makes sense to uh, specify uh, some sort of variable, which is a constant variable right here. We use final keyword to create a constant integer. And you see that this count variable is set to 100, and therefore this will be an array of 500 string references, right? Just remember, on this line right here, no strings will be created. Only array of integers, I'm sorry, only array of uh, object references to strings, right? So this will be an array in memory like this. There will be space reserved, right? The space from beginning to ending, uh, the, the space reserved will be 100 elements. And each element inside this long array of 100, uh, um, 100 uh, string references will be populated 
with null reference to a string. So we then must uh, um, use some kind of loop uh, to initialize every single element of this array with basically a reference to an actual string. Right? So this will be an actual string that we create somewhere and then we can uh, populate uh, each element with reference uh, to a specific string. Now notice that because reference uh, references in Java can be duplicated very easily, it's also possible to have elements of an array, which is an array of objects, uh, to point to the same object in memory. Right? So it's 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 also possible to have an array of, of references that point to the same object or a point to different objects. So it's, there is uh, no uh, uh, there is no uh, way to know unless you want to compare these elements to find out if they're the same or different. But the same object references can be stored inside an array of objects. But technically speaking, in Java there are no array of objects. There are arrayable object references. Okay, and objects live in their own uh, memory. So as we discussed already in our demo uh, code, uh, we uh, use a square bracket notation to declare an array, to specify that prices is an array of doubles. Then uh, we use, if we choose to uh, create an array using the new operator, uh, it gives us an advantage to specify possibly a variable that specifies how many array elements we want. And uh, uh, here, um, again, the square brackets indicate the size of an array. So we use, this is one use of square brackets to modify the type of prices to be an array of doubles. And then uh, uh, we use it again to specify the size together with new operator. And the third time we start using it, um, this becomes a subscript operator or index operator using square brackets specifying element index to access individual elements. So these are, of course, doubles that we assign to the four of these doubles inside this array. Now also, of course, we're getting into this territory where we have to watch out for the size, sizes of our arrays. Uh, it's very easy to uh, miscalculate an index, especially if this is a variable, uh, then uh, it would be out of range. Remember, if this is what we've just done, array size becomes a fixed uh, value. So you cannot uh, change the size of an array. Array facility is rather primitive. So if you specify an index to a non-existing element, like right here, this is an array of doubles, so we have uh, one, two, three, four doubles. Okay, then we wrap these doubles uh, inside the memory of an array object, and then we get access to this array object. Um, and then 0, 1, 2, 3 will be, of course, storing these values uh, like this. Right, so we just update uh, individual elements by doing this. But if we attempted to do something like this, index 4, which is right here outside, outside of the size of this array, if we attempted to store this value right here in the non-existing uh, memory, basically, um, Java uh, will generate a runtime exception, which is array index out of bounds. So that's pretty... Um, pretty consistent and obviously if you see something like this you need to start looking at uh, what is the name of the array and you probably need to find a place where the array was declared and you need to focus on the size of an array and find out why is it that uh, you're doing something like this where is the this logical error uh, originates from right? so you need to fix this kind of problem uh, when you see this type of an exception and yeah, so with strings, we already saw this example in our prior slides.
Yeah, so once uh, we have uh, created an array, we know what is the size of an array. Now we can uh, manipulate individual indexes using the name of an array like this and specifying the index. Again, the ninth index, index 9, basically, is the last index. There is no index 10. As we said, the length of an array uh, is um, specifying the range of elements, and the last uh, element towards the end of the array is always one less than the size of an array. So here 9, because we created an array of 10 integers. And we can then use uh, array elements uh, uh, in formulas like this. Uh, there is no restriction. It's just basically manipulating all of these values, just like because uh, what happens is that uh, when you use the square bracket right here, you're simply referring to individual integers, right? So these are aren't individual integers, and this is 5 right here, right? So these are just references to... Uh, individual inter integers in memory of this array object.